Hi. Hi. Hey. I was just waiting. I was waiting for it to be like recording. And then yeah, yeah, I was waiting too. It was taking a long time. I'm at like nine seconds already. So maybe mine was like, oh, no, no, I'm at 13 stuff. seconds. It just <laughs> we are just I want to make sure the audio is like there. I was just I was <laughs> prepping. Give me a minute. Yeah. It's and I started. What do you do? <laughs> I was like awkward silence. I couldn't handle it. I was no. like, no, no, say something. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Opinionated Lushes, our new books and booze series, where we're inviting some indie authors on our show to read a chapter of their book. And we we still do drink words because that's what we do. And uh, just talk about indie author stuff. So I'm going to pass it to our infamous TikToker, famous Dawn, uh, for her books. And that's how we got into this. So I'm going to pass it to her and she's going to introduce our artist. Go, Dawn. <laughs> hey everyone, um, Dawn, and I am introducing MJ Flock. I want to say that's your name, right? Flock? Falk. Falk. See, I'm horrible with names. I have name illiterate. <laughs> You're um, just throwing L's everywhere. You're I'm, just like, yeah. you get an extra L, you get an you extra L. You get an extra L. L, everyone gets them. <laughs> um, so MJ Falk, uh, and your book is? I forget. Singing Star-Crossed Scales. Singing star -crossed. I'm not going to redo that one. Anyway, um, <laughs> so <laughs> you're having so much trouble. You're just like, I'm, I can't speech today. Okay. Words are hard. <laughs> um, so take it away. You can talk about your book and you. I'm terrible at that, but okay. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, <laughs> how, it's never how did, easy. <laughs> <laughs> like, just tell us, you know, like about, yeah, just tell us like the basic plot of your book, when you, how you started getting into indie writing and maybe your specific genre of writing. <laughs> My genre is basically anything but horror because I don't watch horror. My brain is already a horror show. So I, I, I don't go anywhere near <laughs> yeah, that. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> But no, Singing Star Cross Scales is an urban fantasy romance, and it's uh, dual POV, first person, which is my favorite. And it follows Cassie Moon, who is a bartender who spent most of her 20s and 30s busking her way across the United States because she wants to be a musician. And she's in New York trying to break into the New York music scene. And then she meets Malachi Varen, who is a music producer for Monarch Scales Records and also happens to be a Lian Shi, a, a fae looking for his next feed. So you've got a little bit of workplace romance, you got a little bit of forbidden love, you got some faded mates thrown in there and that sort of stuff. And the fun with this story is that it started, I was, I was literally trying to take a nap. <laughs> and I had this like smutty scene pop into my head and these freaking characters would not leave me alone. So now it's a book. <laughs> That's awesome, though. <laughs> Love Speaking that. of which, Don, did you write today? Don, did you write today? OK, listen, listen you're supposed to write every day. I, I, did I told part. you you're okay, going to be grounded. <laughs> That's right. I napped. So technically I napped. I'm halfway there already. Yeah, I did <laughs> like, the idea part. OK, <laughs> were you thinking of smut, Don? I'm always thinking of smut, Jessica. Okay, so now. now you need to write it. <laughs> <laughs> Every little scene that pops in your head before nap time. Just write it down. Before you get that hibachi started, you write it down. <laughs> Just <laughs> it's my wand. What, what is it called? I don't even know what it's called. It's hitachi? The wand. Yeah, Hitachi. Oh, what what is a you want? I don't know. I'm thinking of like Tamagotchi. You're like crossing I it with a Japanese barbecue here. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh I'm God. hungry, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> For Dick. Like, yeah, that's oh why we're here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's, All right. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> No, I'm just imagining like a Tamagotchi inside your wand and you have to like feed him every day or else you'll die. <laughs> Take him for walks. Oh my god! You like to decorate his house? Like, <laughs> oh, okay, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's continue. First, no, you guys like talked about my wand the last time, and then about like setting the house on fire, and I get electrocuted by. That's because it was a barbecue, apparently. Yeah. All right. 
but that's <laughs> but that's awesome. Don has been talking about writing a book for a long time. So every time we have an author in, I'm always just like, see, Don, see this accomplished person sitting in front of us. Don, you could you could do that. Just, you could do that. I see? could do that. How's your and- book coming, Jessica? How, how's it coming? I'm not the writer here. <laughs> like i'm not on trial but it's like right yeah but this is why mj i'm just saying it's kudos to you for like finishing a book because it's hard (laughs) it's hard it's it's not easy no i always do the half part i do the nap and it's just the writing part it's just not there (laughs) Mm -hmm. no no i hear it. it it's not easy and it's like i just started a new day job because writing does not always pay the bills so now mm-hmm. I'm serving coffee, which is not my ideal, but what can you do? And it's like the indie author game is a lot harder than I was anticipating. And I mean, it's definitely better for my poor little ADHD brain and my rejection sensitive dysphoria uh, <laughs> than traditional publishing, because it's like I've got a folder full of rejections and it's like you're supposed to put it in the folder and pick yourself back up and throw it back out there, whatever that bullshit is. And it's like, all I want to do is print it out, put it in the folder and then just curl up in a little hole and never do it again. <laughs> yeah. But great for you to actually list be like, you know what? Those voices, I don't have to listen to them. I can just power on through. And now you have this book published without the help of these people who have rejected you before. So screw you guys. You did. <laughs> <laughs> I love the indie I mean, I got all the resp- for everything. <laughs> I've got all the respect in the world for traditional publishing and the people who have gone through all of that, but it's definitely not for me. Yeah, <laughs> true. Both are hard. I think both are very hard on their own like scale. It's just mm-hmm. yeah, just in completely different ways. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um. I like. I'm not a writer, but I do do music. So like the indie scene versus like you know the the big stars you know it, it's it's kind of very similar it's like i feel like like there's a lot of competition in the indie scene but also it has its own like benefits comparatively i think too but, do you yeah. remember when the indie scene was called like the underground music yeah <laughs> i freaking hated that yeah <laughs> but that's now that's all i would listen to <laughs> but now there's like so many like people that try to mimic that that aren't indie or underground. No. They just uh, want to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My space days. <laughs> Forever ago. Yeah. Um so, showing our age. Oh what drink words do you have yes, Sonia. for this chapter, Sonia? Okay, so um I'm not a big reader. So the only information I have is that there's a little bit of smut in it. So <laughs> hopefully some of these words show up. Um, I have caressed, whispered, brushed, and flicked. Ooh. So okay, we'll find it's going to make me change the chapter that I was thinking of. But- oh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I wasn't sure like how smutty you wanted me to go. You, oh, like, I, I've got everything. Adult content. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, we are listed as explicit, and in the sub like title, it says like 18 plus. So if you're under okay. 18 and listening to this, you broke the rules, and that is on your parents. <laughs> That's right. Not it's on your us. parents' fault. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But, but like read whatever you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable reading, like I know you should be because you wrote it, but like if reading it makes you uncomfortable, you can do whatever chapter. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I mean, public yeah. speaking, that kind of stuff could still bother the writer. Like, exactly. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not it, it's not like a full on smutty chapter that I'm thinking of. I just have to no, take your find time. it. Take yeah, time. no, that's fine. It's only two chapters off from the one that I was thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> perfect. Because it's perfect. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so the elevator ride wasn't a long one, but we made it with our fingers entwined like it was the most natural thing in the world. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe I was crossing a line somewhere, but it felt comfortable. It felt right. I swallowed a whimper as the doors finally opened and he stepped out, pulling his hand away and leaving cold air in its wake. I followed him out of the elevator, feeling my guitar case bumping against the backs of my thighs as I walked. A bit of discomfort to remind me that I was, in fact, still in the real world. And in the real world, sleeping with the boss was discouraged. We moved into his office, and I dropped into the chair in front of his desk, barely remembering to move my guitar case before sitting on it. 
So, what's the game plan, I asked, fighting the urge to kick up my feet on his desk or tuck them under me. Malachi plugged in an electric kettle and set it on the countertop against the wall. Tea, he asked. Sure, I replied. And to answer your question, this is the logistics stage. We need to break down at least a basic framework, even if we don't have all the details. First, let me ask you, how many songs do you have that might be ready to record for your first album? I sat forward, dropping my elbows to my knees as I thought. A lot. I'm not sure how many of them are album ready, but I write all the time. That one that I played earlier is a great example. If something comes to mind, I write it down. If it's good, I'll turn it into a song. If it's not, it'll sit in my notes until I forget about it or something triggers and I can turn it into something good. I looked down, frowning at my knees. I never put a lot of thought into my process before because I don't spend a ton of time on it. It kind of happens, often in the most inopportune times. I can't tell you how many cold showers I've taken because I set up a shower, got an idea, and let the hot water run while I wrote down a song or workshopped it dancing naked around my kitchen. He raised an eyebrow at that and I blushed. Sorry, I tend to overshare when my mind runs away, runs away with me, I said, but he shook his head. Don't apologize. Your creative process is a joy to imagine. That made me blush even harder, the heat creeping up to my hairline. The kettle whistled and Malachi poured two cups of tea, pressing one into my hands. My fingertips brushed against his and I wanted to reach out for his hand again. How many songs would make a good first album, do you think, I asked, desperate to keep the conversation moving while my tea steeped. He shrugged, settling back into his own chair and setting the cup on the desk. That depends on a lot of different things. Your genre, the length of your songs, whether your album has a theme or something connecting each of the songs to the one before and after it. Folk rock albums that sound similar to your music tend to stick to a theme, but it can be a mixed bag. You might tell a story and then get lumped lumped into the same bag as all those other artists. Or you could shun the theme idea and end up getting overlooked because you don't fit the folk rock mold. My eyes widened. The music industry is fickle. You're already ahead of the game with your bar clientele and your online followers. It's not the, it's not the sort of following most mainstream labels might look for, but it's a start. It's an organic audience that's easy to build on once we get your music out there. I set my tea on Malachi's desk and stood, crossing the space to stand by the window. We were high enough above the streets below that he had a rather spectacular view of the city. It was still early with the massive high rises casting shadows that stretched for blocks. You've got me in your corner now, Malachi said, keeping his voice soft. It can be intimidating, especially trying to crack into this industry on your own. You're not alone anymore, Cassie. We can make your dreams come true, but it's going to be hard work. I chuckled, unable to keep the bitterness out of my tone. I kept, kept my back to him, staring out over the city. I'm no stranger to that. What's a little more? Ready to get to work? I swallowed hard, blinking my eyes to hide unshed tears before turning back to face him. Let's do this. Perfect, he replied, opening a drawer and pulling out a laptop out of the massive desk. It booted up, the screen casting his face in a pale blue glow. Do you have at least, say, 10 songs you could workshop into something ready for release? Easily, I said, a grin tugging up the corners of my mouth. I think Kaleidoscope Heart and Shattered Glass should definitely be on this first EP, he continued. His fingers flew over the keyboard as he took notes. What about that one you sang downstairs? Does it have a name yet? I shrugged. I've been calling it an unrequited love song. It's a great one for tugging at the heartstrings. I can see many a heartbroken lover screaming it into a karaoke mic dedicated to someone who had wronged them. I couldn't help but smile. I paced back and forth behind Malachi's desk, glancing over his shoulder now and then to see the notes he was taking. His, ex his excitement was infectious and worked to buoy the mood as well. It didn't take us long to knock out a rough track list for my first album. Those three words, my first album. They finally started to sink in and I couldn't stop smiling. This is happening, isn't it? I asked. I feel like I should ask you to pinch me to make sure I'm not dreaming. Malachi spun his chair around, staring at me with a quizzical expression. If you insist, he said, reaching out and landing a sharp pinch on my hip. I yelped jumping back, my feet tangling around each other, threatening to spill me onto the ground. I cursed under my breath, trying to regain my balance, but I didn't have a chance. Malachi half stood, slipping his arm around my waist and pulled me toward him. I landed hard on his lap as he sat back down with a gasp caught in my throat. Sorry, I whispered, breathless. I could feel the length of his body pressed to mine, held in place by one muscular arm around my waist. His free hand rested lightly on my thigh above my knee and every point of contact threatened to set me on fire. No, I should apologize, he replied, his voice barely a whisper, his breath hot on my neck. You asked for a pinch, not for me to knock you clear off your feet. I could cut the tension in the room with a knife. 
both of us knew we needed to stand up, separate, put some space between us. We needed to return to a sense of professionalism and decorum, but neither of us wanted to make the first move in either direction. I tried to break the tension with a bit of humor. I should stand up before your legs fall asleep, I joked. I wasn't the smallest or most delicate flower in the bouquet by any means. I didn't hate what I looked like most days, but you wouldn't find me on the cover of any beauty magazines unless it was for some record weight loss. Instead of chuckling or nudging me off his lap, Malachi lifted his hand from my thigh and traced my cheek. Reaching up, he took my chin in his hand and turned my face toward him. You are beautiful, Cassie, he said, his voice husky, our faces so close our noses almost touched. His fingertips lingered on my jawline, teasing the delicate skin. Don't let ever let anyone tell you otherwise, especially that voice in your head. I wasn't sure whether to laugh or cry. I could pull off hot or sexy, especially in some of the specialty numbers I had hidden away in the back of my wardrobe. But beautiful wasn't a word I ever heard. Spend enough time in public and you'll learn the brute You'll learn the brutal lesson that you're not beautiful if you're fat. Shh, my beautiful girl, he whispered. I can see the thoughts spiraling in your head. If I could silence them with a word, I would. You are beautiful. Don't let anyone, not even you, tell you otherwise. I could fear the t feel the tears welling up in my eyes. Malachi cupped my cheek, a soft and sad smile on his lips. I could convince you, you know, he said, hint of mischief in his tone. I doubt that, I replied, hating how my voice broke over the last word. Oh, my beautiful girl, don't doubt me, he purred, pressing forward and capturing my lips with his. For an instant, I froze, but when the tip of his tongue teased the crease of my lips, I gasped. That was all the invitation he needed. The kiss consumed me, pulling the air from my lungs and leaving me gasping. The hand that cut my cheek moved, fingers threading through my hair. He grabbed a handful of colorful locks, tugging enough to get my attention, but not enough to hurt. I moaned against his mouth. It might have been minutes, it might have been hours. I lost all sense of time, but when he pulled away, I whimpered, feeling the loss like a physical pain. He released my hair, letting his fingers linger against my cheek before the hand dropped back into my lap again. Do you believe me now, he asked. His voice had taken on a hard edge and the change startled me into opening my eyes. His gray irises stared back at me with the same intensity of a sea sky before a storm. I opened my mouth, but my voice failed me. All I could do was nod. Good girl, he purred, the phrase sending a shiver of pleasure down my spine. Ready to get back to work? I nodded again, and finally, with a palpable reluctance, he nudged me out of his lap. He offered a hand to steady me until I learned how my feet worked again. Now, he said, lips as red and bruised as mine probably were, what other songs do you think would work for your EP? I gaped at him, feeling like a fish out of water before I regained my faculties. Grinning, I stepped around the desk, settling into the chair. This time, I did kick my feet up on the desk. Malachi raised an eyebrow, but didn't say anything. I've got a few ideas, I said. Let's get to work. Ooh, that was good. I like the setup. I like that, too. Yeah. It's just, for me, it's like, oh, yeah, wow, 10 songs for a whole, like, wow. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me on that. This is like, I, I'm very much on the writing side of thing. I know nothing about music, and yet I write a musician. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. That's exactly what they sound like. <laughs> you and Chris will have to role play. Ooh, you can be your, like, yeah. sexy producer, and you're trying to, like, get some songs on. Yeah. Mm, dirty <laughs> <laughs> which is like real life you know <laughs> it's, like, it's like yeah my songs do well because i'm married to my producer <laughs> what do you think i do to get a song <laughs> wink 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 nudge, nudge. I mean, it's not cheating if it works <laughs> <laughs> that's what i always say whenever he's like i'm not famous enough i'm like you're just not giving enough blowjobs that sounds like a you problem <laughs> Get on your knees more often. Like, damn. <laughs> like, geez, Chris. <laughs> so is there, like, w how did you enter this genre of writing specifically? Like, ri like, writing smut books? Was it just because you just, like, had this vision in your head? Or were you always drawn to smut books? Or uh, No. Um, some Probably late 2019, early 2020, I started picking up... Uh, faded mate shifter romances on kindle unlimited and it's like i've written i've got everything from like hard sci-fi to uh high fantasy and all over the places it's, uh, it's all like unfinished drafts and things that i'm still working on 
And then I started picking up these like romance novels and I was never a romance reader. I, was, I wasn't one of those people that kind of looked down on romance, but it wasn't my primary genre. Yeah. And then I started reading them and it's like, okay, I kind of like these. And then these idiot characters showed up into my head and it's like, well, shit. Because my the last draft I wrote was actually a sci-fi romance, which I ended up, it's so funny. It's like I started before I kind of got over my whole aversion to writing smut. Not so much aversion, but like fear. Yeah. And it's like, I literally have a note in like the first 30,000 words or something of that draft that just says, write the sex scene you're too chicken shit to write. <laughs> <laughs> and then the rest of that book is like, I created a whole ass alien race just so I could play with a wing kink. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like that one, that one needs a lot, a, a lot of editing because I didn't actually come up it's a it ended up being like 130,000 words and I don't think I actually came up with my antagonist until like the last 20,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> but and then I started on this one and it's like the way the characters popped into my head it just it just f felt perfect for romance. And it was initially supposed to be a standalone but then these idiots won't leave me alone so now it's <laughs> they're coming back. We get the series. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, um, I, I, sorry, I was just going to ask just because she was talking about editing. Yeah. Um, do you, are you like a planning writer or are you a writer and then an edit? Like, which do you focus more on, you think? Like, do you plan I, it all before writing it or do you just write it and then edit it all after? Uh, I was a hardcore pantser for a long time, which is probably <laughs> why my last draft, I didn't get my antagonist until like the last act of the book. But uh, it's slowly kind of evolved to where I'm a, I'm a bit half and half. It's like uh, for this book, I had a um, kind of like a loose outline mm -hmm. for book one. And then I had a, a little bit more of a comprehensive outline for book two. It was mostly like major plot points of yeah. where it needed to go and pretty, hmm, excuse me pretty much everything else in the middle was up to the characters. And then I've got a, uh, a Kindle Vela serial that I'm working on. And that has a more detailed uh, outline because it, it's posting chapters every week. You really kind of have to know where the story is going to go or it's going to go completely off the rails. <laughs> True. <laughs> Unfortunately, Canada does not have Kindle Vela. Like, we're not allowed to have that for some reason, which is bullshit. That's so weird. We and don't get anything. We don't. Like, I'm allowed Kindle Unlimited, um, but Kindle Vela or whatever? No, we're not allowed to have that. I've tried. We had zero perks over here. No. <laughs> yeah, the healthcare, that's about it. And that's going yeah, down. That's Dude, not so. good. No. Okay, done. Go. Sorry, I just always get curious about about the like the planning versus editing because every author has like their own like way they do things. So. Mm. Um, I was just wondering what made you choose first POV, like first person versus third person. I prefer first person, um, for reading, but uh, I didn't know like if there was a reason you chose first person versus third person. I mean, it's it just ended up that way. I mean, I've written in both. It's like I had a short story published last year by uh, Lost Boys Press in one of their anthologies, and that one was in third person. But I just I like writing in first person because I really like getting into my characters' heads, partially because I pour more of myself into my characters than is probably healthy. But it also <laughs> it's just easier for me to kind of craft the world and figure out how they're interacting with it because I'm like right there in their heads. Yeah, I think that's why I like first person. I like hearing the internal monologue of someone, right? And especially when you're listening to the girls and the guys POV, because mm -hmm. I want to know what he's thinking too. I don't want to just listen to her because I, I'm going to think this guy's a jerk if he starts being mean. I need to hear what's in his head and why he chose to say this thing or do that, right? So I prefer first person, yeah. but there's a lot of third person uh, novels out there. I'm surprised. I like reading third person. Um, 
just because I like a whole story. And plus, uh, it's just easier for my brain to understand, um, like, people's own point of views. My, like, brain doesn't really, like, eh, I'm not really sure about that. But when I have, like, a whole variety of characters doing their thing at the same time, I I don't know. That's just what I can get into more. I, I flip flop. I, mean, just I just read the book. Yeah. yeah. I'm just like, oh, this is a really good story, you know, and that's usually what gets me. So I feel like as long as it's a good story, whatever point of view, I assume the point of view has a purpose to make the story yeah. good. That's, yeah. that's what always just what I assume. Yeah. Um, is your books wide or are they just strictly um, Amazon? Uh, they started out wide and then first of the year I switched them over to Kindle Unlimited because uh, I don't know if it was my shoddy marketing or uh, just the fact that everybody tends to gravitate toward the Zon, but it's like over three months, probably like 98% of my sales were all through Amazon. I think I got maybe two sales on Apple Books when I was wide. So it's just like, I appreciate it, but it works a little better, especially for romance, because people love finding romances on Kindle Unlimited. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's where I found them. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's like, I've got fr- one. <laughs> I've got one writer friend who writes mostly uh, very, very grim dark. Like, if you like bloody, gory sci fi, <laughs> Halo Scott. <laughs> her stuff is phenomenal and it's like I just finished one of her books the other day and it's like I'm literally crying on my Kindle I hate you so much when's the next one coming out <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to show, check it out her stuff is in Kindle Unlimited but because it's not specifically romance it's like it's got some romance elements but it's primarily like grimdark sci-fi uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of Kindle page reads, but uh, she's mostly using it for your ability to uh, do like sales and stuff, mm-hmm. like dropping it from like five bucks to 99 cents or whatever. Because if you have your book on on Kindle through Amazon, like through Amazon's KDP, uh, you can't drop it lower than two ninety nine. So you can't uh-huh. do any like 99 cent sales or anything like that. Yeah, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Oh, there's a lot Neither of I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you know. Yeah. Some new information for everybody. <laughs> and like when you sign to um, Kindle Unlimited, you're not allowed to go wide. You're not allowed to go on Apple Books. You're not allowed to go on, um, what's it called? It starts with an R. Um, it's the R one. Yeah. Yeah, with the coup. Like, <laughs> no uh, idea. The Rakuten Kobo? Yeah. Or whatever the hell it was. That's <laughs> the one. Yep. The Kobo. Um but yeah, you can't do any of that. You have to strictly stay with Amazon, um, uh-huh. which is a pain. But at the same time, I if, mean, if that's the majority of, of your are. sales are there, yeah. that just makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah. Like it, it's I mean, such it's, a discussion. It's, it's a pain, but it's also only a ninety day uh, exclusivity. So after that mm-hmm. ninety days, if you decide you want to go wide again, you can take it out of uh, Kindle Unlimited and go do that without any repercussions. Yeah. That's awesome. At least, yeah. at least that's an option, you know. So as you long can, like, as you remember it. to click it off. Um, <laughs> it's such, no, it's yeah, such that, that is the thing. Yeah, it's um, it's such a discussion on TikTok. Um, if you want to go wide or strictly Kindle Unlimited, it, like some authors are like, no, wide, wide. You want to be wide, and then other people are like, no. Most of my sales are on Amazon, so why am I going wide? Like my mm-hmm. page reads mm-hmm. make up my paycheck. So yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, I, I've never published a book. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a deadline. Well, before last year, I hadn't either. So I'm just kind of making it up as I go. <laughs> no, that's, that's life. Like, yeah. you, you fake it in your pants. pants. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> You're like, well, well, I guess I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, just throw shit at the wall, see what sticks. Exactly. Yeah. So, so do you have good. like any books you're like planning on coming out by the end of the year or next year or like in the near future uh yeah i've actually i'm working on books two and three of uh the monarch scale series which started with singing sarcross scales 
And then I've got that Kindle Vela series that I'm working on, which I'm hoping to get out the first couple of episodes before the end of the month. But I'm also running out of time and it's uh, (laughs) harder to write when you have to go make coffee during the day. (laughs) True, true. Yeah. I used to make coffee during the day. That was a great job. Was it not? (laughs) <laughs> like no i hated it i hate it i, I was a I supervisor had it, i had it for one day i know how horrible it is i was like no nope. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, i used to work at uh tim hortons and so and i was a supervisor <laughs> she's just like the god <laughs> you're chewing somebody away oh, sorry my husband was coming in <laughs> <laughs> like, no. Like, no no <laughs> men allowed <laughs> I love oh, no, that. He, uh, th- there's a reason I'm in here where he can't get behind me because every time I'm on a Zoom call, he always threatens to show up in helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that this isn't that kind of show. Like, we add it. We'll put it on our Patreon for $5 a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Patreon exclusive content. <laughs> the helicopter. Uh, that would really sell your book, probably. Oh, yeah. Probably. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I know it makes me think of that TikTok audio. Is like, okay, who do I got to show my tits to to get some views on this damn app? Because I will. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Maybe that's what I did. It was like one time. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> how I got my followers. I just was like, mm. you showed like, just enough to not get banned. Exactly. You know? Yeah, just be- mm. just below the nipple. Like, yeah, you yeah. Just, you had the yeah. nips. You don't show those. Yeah. No. That's only for OnlyFans, you know? He's... No, but uh, under boob is totally fair game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, you boob. just go like that. I, I'm, my camera's not high enough, but I, I had them covered. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to, else like, fair game. I'd have to, like, turn my camera really low that is what I to be like. able to get my tits in <laughs> the shot in nowadays. Too, yeah. I have you to know? lift them. I don't know about you guys, but, like, they're heavy, and so you have to lift even if I turn my camera low, like you'll see them hanging. Still to, they're still like hiding under the desk. You gotta like yeah. throw them over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> throw them over your shoulder and then turn around, and then they'll probably be yeah, at the right. That's at right. the you right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't have to change the camera angle at all. <laughs> yeah. So I just throw them over and turn around and be like, "There you yeah. go. There yeah. you go." Always Old thinking. tits. <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you guys have any other questions? No, I think I'm good. Tanya, do you have any questions? I really liked, I don't have a question. I have a statement. Go for uh, you. <laughs> I, I really did enjoy that chapter. Um, it wasn't just straight smut right away. It was like an introductory, like, okay, yeah, maybe later on we're actually going to do this. But there's a story there first. Like yeah. the story comes yeah. first mm-hmm. and then build up. The like, build up. Yeah, that was. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't get the smut in chapter one until book two. It's <laughs> right, right at the beginning. It's just right at the beginning. It's their balls in your it. face. That's yeah. right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. First line is he walks in doing the helicopter. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to entice his uh, mate. Mm-hmm. He's <laughs> <laughs> his dance seduction. Oh, that's dancing. hot. That's hot. <laughs> I'm so turned on right now, actually. <laughs> Rub those nipples, Jessica. You can't. They're, they're way down here. You can't even see my hands. We already them. talked about Throw it. Throw them over uh. and rub. <laughs> Just rub in the back of your neck. <laughs> okay, uh, MJ, if you want to uh, just sign off all your social media is where they can f- list find your book and uh your future you know books and social media and every well, however you want to sell yourself sell yourself we're giving you this time <laughs> sell yourself <laughs> um i'm pretty easy to find i am balaseth it's b-a-l-i-s-e-t-h basically everywhere the only one that's different is um tiktok where it's balaseth writes uh you can find me uh, at my website on mjfalk.com and Obviously, my books are on Amazon, and that's that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm I try to keep things pretty simple because if I make it too complicated, I'm never gonna keep track of anything. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. I mean, same with us. We're the, we're the same everywhere as well. Keeping it simple. People don't want to search. Yeah, mm-hmm. just as sometimes like there's an underline or like a hyphen, but an underscore. Basically, it's that's whatever you know what i was trying it was to say. underlined i like <laughs> it's, it's fine, fine. 
I, I want to say it's because I'm drinking, but I'm not. So like, I know you just have midweek brain. It's cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> midweek brain. I yeah, like it's that. A thing. It's nope. a thing now. It's because it's hump day, and she hasn't gotten humped yet. So that's exactly it. You got, you got <laughs> two hours left. <laughs> Get her yeah, in. We're, we're we're too far from the weekend on both directions. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, MJ, for coming on. Um, and stay tuned. Check on Thursdays for our books and booze, and uh, keep meeting these authors because I'm having a good time doing this. Me this too. is fun. I'm having like, a great yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm having fun. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably have you back. No, yeah. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Next book. Next book. There you go. I'm I'm aiming for roughly June for that release. So, Ooh. if you get any sci-fi books completed, you let me know. That's my jam. The sci-fi. Yeah, the sci-fi. Jessica's like more horror, and then I'm like the smart girl. Like anything with like a lot of kinky. <laughs> and my way. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> okay, well, have a good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.